Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, this is uh, Shackleton. Now, if you watched a um, pre, if you watched the previous videos of mine where I'm talking about the brain, um, I started one video just eating an orange. Actually, it, it was a tangerine. I got called on that. Um, anyway, I got an apple here today, so I'll just start <laughs> eating the. Actually, you know, you get the idea. Okay. Remember this heal process. Have a positive experience. Enrich the experience. Absorb the experience. Have it fill your being. And then link it to negative experiences. And you can train yourself and get really good at this sort of technique. And then you can deal with emotionally with abrupt climate change and stay on an even keel. Because there's lots of negative things happening out there on the uh, climate front. So I started to talk about this picture of the brain. And when I was talking about the, the historical evolution of the brain, okay, we have the spinal cord coming up into the brain stem, the base of the brain. And this section here, um, so the lower part of the brain was the part that evolved first. So this is the part, what was most important was the avoidance of bad things in order to survive. So this is all about avoidance. So there's an amygdala in that region. And if you see danger, the amygdala fires up and activates. And you can see this on brain scans. And it sends signals to the hypothalamus, which then releases uh, stress hormones like norepinephrine, or sorry, um, yeah, adrenaline and cortisol and things like that. Okay, and those things then go to the hippocampus and uh, they stop it producing brain cells and it can actually shrink. And, you know, it's basically the fear and flight response. And that, now that's really a bit of a misnomer, the fear um the the uh fight or flight response rather it's a bit of a misnomer because there's other options between you know if you see danger you can stand your ground and fight you can flee okay take flight fight or flight but most people freeze actually i think something like 70 75 percent of people you know when they in in the face of danger they just freeze and course that can be the worst possible thing that you do whenever you have training you know if you're in the police or military and you have training then that training sets up neural pathways so that you your actions are automatic okay when when something happens you automatically do this when something else happens you automatically do this and that allows you to uh, that that training is basically teaching the brain to bypass some of these, um, you know, flight versus fight versus freeze so, sort of systems and to, to do things automatically to, to get the job done. So, so that, that evolved first. That's called the lizard brain, if we think. So, the, you know, it's, it's in all of our brains. Then this, uh, as you go up higher, this evolved later. This is the mammalian part of the brain, if you like, or the, um, the mouse brain. Call it the mouse brain. Okay, um, and that has, one of the big parts of that brain is uh, it, there's a reward system. So this is the approaching uh, behaviors. You know, the, um, the animal approaches food, for example, or the animal approaches uh, shelter at night, or the animal approaches, um, you know, approaches, uh, you know, a, a stream or, or a pond or fresh water, okay? Um, and and uh, so that's that part of the brain. And then the last part to evolve, the higher order lobes part. So this is the brain stem, if you like, the sub cortex and then the cortex and the cortex part that's all about connecting with other people that's all about 
communicating with other people, whether it be with hand signals and grunts initially, and then eventually language and problem solving and uh, higher order functions. And the more intelligent, um, so part of the evolution was the brain increased in size greatly, and it also became a lot more, there are a lot more convolutions on the surface of the brain. That greatly increased the surface area, and that can be tied almost um, quite strongly to to uh, intelligence. Okay, so that's the the system of connecting, the system of love, the system of bonding with other other uh, creatures. Okay, this is just another view. Um, if you're in Google, Google Google Images, and I just uh, typed in brain anatomy, and I get this. So there's all kinds of information there. Here's just another view of the. Um, of the uh, the, the uh, cross section of the brain. I guess this is looking from the uh, back or the front. I'm not sure which. Okay, um, now I mentioned the amygdala. Okay, so again, Google Images, amygdala. So the amygdala sits about here. It's in the lower part of the brain. Um, these are the vagus nerves coming up. This is the uh, spinal cord, brain stem. Um, so we've got the amygdala here, uh, and here it is here, and this is the thing that um, lights up, and the hippocampus is located close by. Okay, so this is the base instinct, uh, flight versus flight or fight, or actually freeze quite often. Um, okay, so, I, so this is, um, you know, often when we're emotional and angry and you know, we're really stressed, the amygdala is overactive. So you can think physically of soothing your amygdala to, to reduce those, those feelings. Um, so when the amygdala is activated, there's danger. Um, the hypothalamus um, gets signals and it's told basically reduce, um, release rather uh, stress hormones. So like adrenaline, for example, making you really, really strong for short periods of time. Um, and uh, other, other uh, stress hormones are, are, are released from the hypothalamus. So these are some of the stress hormones. So cortisol here. Um, so basically, the uh, system... There's a lot of different things that go on. Um, so here we go. Let's have a look at just one of these. So stress hormones are released. Pupils dilate. Okay. Uh, let's, let's in more light. Makes you more aware of your surroundings, your intestinal muscles. Um, actually, they, they relax. Okay. Um, blood pressure in the arteries increases, more power, blood sugar levels increase, heart rate increases, blood flow to skeletal muscles increase, breathing rate increases. Okay, all of these things um, kick in. Uh, this is not such a good thing. It can lead to many accidents um, when people in, they're, they're, they're are exposed to, to uh, dangers and they're in terror, then their, their uh, intestinal muscles relax. Not a good thing. Um, so those stress hormones then affect the hippocampus where there's, uh, this is spatial, temporal, um, higher order, some, some uh, stuff is being processed. So the actual, if the stress, if the amygdala is firing too active, then the hypothalamus is producing too many stress hormones. And if they're in the body and they're not removed, uh, quickly, they can linger in the body, and then they can actually shrink the hippocampus. Um, and the hippocampus uh, does actually is actually a birthplace of new neurons and things. Okay, so here we go. This is another view showing the three-parted brain. So here's the lizard brain functions: the brain stem and cerebellum. This is the autopilot, fight versus flight. It controls things like your breathing and uh, sleeping and things like that. Okay, um, and then as, as the brain evolved more and we went from 
lizards and reptiles to mammals. Then we added this higher order part of the brain system, the limbic system responsible for emotions, memories, habits, and attachments, the mammal brain, if you like. And then we move up from there to the primate brain, the human brain, the, neo, the um, neocortex, the cortex. Language, abstract thought, imagination, consciousness, reasoning, rationalization. You get more and more. So, so basically, so this is showing the different sections of the human brain. But in the evolutionary cycle, the lizards would only have this part. They wouldn't have the rest of this part. And then as lizards evolved into mammals over time, then they would have the, you'd still have the lizard part and you'd get the mammal part added. So that would be the entirety of the mammal brain. And then primates, you started growing this, uh, this part here. And then humans, you have the whole kit and caboodle, but you still have these very primitive parts, okay, of the brain. Okay, uh, this is brain size increasing. So this is millions of years ago, um, starting about 10 or so. And this is cubic centimeters, okay? Centimeters to the cube. This is a volume here. So you can see as, that, uh, you know, four million years ago, Australopithecus, um, it shows the skull size is increasing. Um, it shows the, the neural wiring is increasing. Um, the volume of the brain is increasing. So here we have homo, so you can see a very sharp rise here, very non-linear rise. And here's where we are here, the Homo sapiens, um, about four, you know, 1,500 cubic centimeters brain size, something like that. Okay, there's another view of, uh, this is another view. Uh, I just got my cat here joining the presentation. He's getting a bit restless. Whoop, come on. I uh, have to let him, let him out. Uh. Okay, so we've got this sort of thing, this curve, very highly nonlinear curve here. Now, I talked about neurons. So these are the neurons here. This is the basic building block of the brain. Okay, this is the thing. There's 100 billion of these things. Um, and so there's a, an axon here, okay, which, which carries electrical signals across. There's something called the myelin sheath, which is an insulating sheath on it to keep the signal inside the cell. Good strong signals, connections here, little nodes of RANVA, the different parts. This is the, um, the axon termination here. And then there's dendrite. So this is very much like octopus tentacles. So, so remember, you'll have, typically you'll have this, the signal comes in here and when you get um, an electrical signal above a threshold, then it fires and the signal goes here and then it spreads out at the other end. And there's, this, is, this guy here is connected to 5,000 other neurons in, in this neural network. Um, and there's some images here. So these neurons would be firing uh, you know, so you get these nodes. So imagine this networker node. And so a thought will be a whole different pathway of connected neurons lights up. And ne these neurons that fire up, they wire together. So if a neuron here fires and another neuron over here fires, and those two will start a connection, you'll start getting synapses grown um, in between. Come on, kitty. Come on. Okay. Um, so that happens. And um, so there's some other images here. Based different, there's different types of neurons, okay, different patterns here, depending on which part of the cell they're in, depending on which animals they're in. When we talk about neural networks, artificial intelligence is involving the use of neural networks to try to simulate the operation of the brain in order to create um, intelligent machines. And um, I just want to, uh, I think that's, I'll, I'll end up here. Um, I won't talk about problems with the brain, but HEAL. Okay, remember this acronym? Have a positive experience. Enrich it in your mind. Absorb, absorb it. Feel like it's permeating your soul. And then link it to negative thoughts. And this is a great way to deal with climate change.